Okay, doctors. Um, so while we are waiting for some more doctors to join, hello and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I don't know whatever country you're joining from. First of all, happy new year to all of you and best of luck. Uh, I'm sure you all have joined today because you are somewhere in your top two preparation journey. And hopefully this session will be helpful for you. All right. Uh, apart from the free session, doctors, I also run uh, paid courses. So if any one of you is interested, please let me know. And if you want more details of the live course happening soon, please let me know about that as well if you need more details. All right. Uh, doctors, I would request you if you could please mute yourself. All right, I have muted everyone now. Um, at the end of the session, you will be able to ask me questions. It will not be a one-way conversation. Uh, I will let you doctors ask questions. Why I do not um, allow questions during these sessions because there are too many of you, sometimes even in hundreds. Um, and what happens is that if I allow everyone to ask questions during the session, it will last forever, okay? So we want to save some time. So your questions are more than welcome, but at the end of the session, all right? Okay. All right, doctors. So today what we are discussing, it's a station about urinary tract symptom, which is dysuria, all right? So I will discuss the station. I have tried my best to prepare the station in a way that if this sort of stations, any other stations come this way, you can tackle them as well, okay? Um, or any other stations which are related to sexual health, you can tackle them as well. All right, for PLAP to exam especially, it is very, very important that we generalize some things, okay? We generalize, we, for example, we should have a general history pattern for every kind of station, okay? Each kind of station has its own pattern, okay? For example, I'm sure whatever stage of your preparation you are, I'm sure by now, you do understand there are different categories of PLAB2 stations, right? So there are, I call them history and diagnosis stations, something that we are going to discuss today, okay? So one type of station is that, all right? And there are other types of station like counseling stations or ethical stations, where which includes, for example, breaking bad news, okay? Uh, now, all of these stations, which I named just now, each one of them has its own pattern. So, any one of you, I would advise you that if you want to be lost in this journey of preparation, if you think the way academies give you the approach, they give you this approach that, okay, I'm sending you the notes, you study these hundreds and hundreds pages of notes, read them and then come take our classes. So what happens is that you go through those notes, you attend their classes, and then you are still in that uh, kind of uh, feeling that, okay, one day maybe I will get hold of my PLAB2 preparation. Maybe when I revise once more, maybe when I revise once more, I will get hold on my preparation. But what happens is that you have, the syllabus is so long, it is so huge that you go through everything and then what you find out that, oh my God, I'm still not fully prepared. And then you appear in the exam, what happens is you are lost because you didn't have a structure. So all what I said, what I, my point is what I'm trying to prove is that you need to have a structure. Some doctors, 
they go into their exam, they come back, somehow they find out that everything in PLAP2 exam has a structure. And if you do not have a structure, if you want to be lost in bundles and bundles of scripts, unfortunately, you will not be able to pass this exam. Okay, I always tell my doctors, even when I'm conducting courses or I'm taking mocks, I always tell them, you should forget all the scripts in PLAB2 exam. But one thing you should not forget about is being a doctor. Because in the end of the day, for goodness sake, I would request you all, please prepare for this exam that one day you need to work in this system. Okay? Why they are taking this exam for you, from you? They, why, what are they assessing you for? They are assessing you that will you be able to work as a doctor at a level of FY2 at least here in the NHS? So what do you want to do? Do you want to just enter the system before knowing the system well? No, you don't want to do that. So please don't just rely on scripts. Have a structure for everything that will save you in your career as well. As you enter FY2, you will go to, into the hospital. For example, when I went into, I was very scared in my attachment and joining NHS as well. But then I had my history structure sorted. I had differentials sorted in my head already. So when I'm talking to the patients in ED, I know where I should be going. So forget everything. Again, doctors, I would reiterate myself. You can forget everything in PLAP to exam, but one thing you should not forget, being a real doctor. Okay? Right. I hope from all this six, seven minutes conversation, you have understood two things are clear to you that I have to have an approach. Otherwise, I will forget everything before even I enter the cubicle. No scripts you will remember. I'm telling you, I can bet on it. You will not remember anything. Okay? And second thing, be a safe doctor and remember to be a doctor at least. So what I have seen... Lots of doctors just memorize scripts. And what are they trying to be? There's someone who, who is very good at memorizing. Goes and vomits everything on patient's face. No matter how many times you do that, unfortunately, you will not clear this exam. Okay? All right, doctors. Now, all this conversation I was doing because I wanted some more doctors to join so that, as I said, as many of you can be benefited from these sessions. Now, unfortunately, I used to conduct these free sessions more often, but because of my personal issues, I'm very busy. I started doing some locum, locum job and uh, in between for two months, I was away, but I'm here, I'm back again. All right, doctors, let's start then. Okay, doctors, before even I start, I want to give you a little bit of a background that what we are talking about today. So we are talking about UTI symptoms, okay? A station where a woman comes, okay? And I just want you to, all, you, all of you to listen to me. And if you have got a pen and paper, write down. Okay, write down what we are going to solve today. What mystery are we solving today? So the mystery is that there's a 24-year-old woman who has been coming to the clinic. She came to the GP clinic. Previously, she came into the clinic. She had symptoms of dysuria. Okay, and after one week, she comes back again. She has dysuria again. However, the dipstick on both the occasions was negative, okay? So the dipstick was negative and you have the culture results now as well. And they are negative as well, okay? So culture results are negative, dipstick is negative, all right? 
So one thing you are quite sure about so far that it is very less likely an infection. But if it is not an infection, how, how do I go about it? How do I treat my patient? Why my patient is still continuing to have dysuria? She is continuing to have dysuria because there could be other reasons for her problem, apart from just water infection or LUT. What is LUT? Lower urinary tract infection. There could be something else. But does that exclude 100% that the patient does not have lower urinary tract infection? Well, if you have just the dipstick, the chances are that it still could be lower urinary tract infection. But if the culture and sensitivity from the urine sample has been negative as well, very less likely that it is a lower urinary tract infection. Okay. Now, before I go ahead, another thing, because I have studied a lot yesterday for this free session, a background knowledge, because I want you to be doctors. I don't want you to be robots or scripted doctors from you know, just reading notes and going into the exam. Now, for example, they decide to change the station. Okay. And you have a woman who has come with recurrent symptoms of urinary tract infection. And she also has culture and sensitivity positive. Okay. So, you know, now she has two episodes of infection, okay? For example, in last six months or three episodes of UTI proved UTI infection, three episodes in one year, okay? Three episodes in one year and two episodes in last six months, okay? If she's having these recurrent symptoms, you will treat her on a basis that you will give her an antibiotic prescription that if it is related to her sexual activity, what I mean to say by, by it is related to her sexual activity, that if she gets symptoms every time she has unprotected sex, she will be given a prescription so she can start antibiotics and we will also give her a tub for collection of urine so she can take midstream urine drop it to the gp clinic and she can self start herself on single dose of antibiotic after the unprotected sexual intercourse i hope it is clear so far and if her recurrent uti if her recurrent UTI is not associated with the sexual activity, then in that case, she can take lower dose of antibiotic for six months. She will be prescribed very low dose of nitroferentine or trimethoprim, and she can take that for six months. Okay? Doctors, please don't scribble on the page. All right, it just breaks my flow. All right, flow of the lecture will be broken, so you don't want that, right? Okay. So this is something when and if they change the station and it is a proved UTI, but the station that appeared recently didn't have that. The culture and sensitivity was negative. All right. And now one of the doctor from my previous course, she is not able to join. If any one of you from the course, from the previous batches is here, can you please let Dr. Mahbuba know that she can, I will help her later on. Okay. She doesn't have to worry about it. It will be unfair that if I kick someone else and 
um, and I let her in. It's not fair. Can you please, can some, someone from our course, can let her know? Okay. All right. Okay, doctors. Now let's go about this station where it is negative. Okay. Culture and sensitivity negative, but woman has dysuria. Okay. She has been having dysuria since last two weeks. All right. Now, systematically, we will go through our station, how to start the station. Doctors, when you start the station, I always tell doctors, some parts of your consultation, you must fix them and practice them. Because if you don't generalize these things, because the problem is that we usually think, most of us, we are intelligent people, and we are pretty comfortable with our English as well. Right? Most of us. Okay, doctors. Um, there is someone who's trying to be very naughty and keeps on scribbling on the page. I will kick the person out when I know that someone is scribbling. Please don't do that. Okay? It is just distracting me. Now, what I have to do, I have to... <sighs> this is not good. Please don't scribble. I would really appreciate that. Please don't be the babies. Okay. So doctors, as I was saying, that you should fix some part of your consultation and you should practice them. The first thing when you start your preparation, you should fix those parts. What I mean to say those parts, for example, your introduction. A person like me, for example, when I started my preparation, I thought, Oh, well, introduction is no problem. What will happen? I, I will be able to introduce myself. But you know, when in the exam situation, you will sound so shaky. First impression is something that you can, you know, you can gain something huge or you can lo lose something huge. So please fix your introductions, whether it is, there are different types of introductions, okay? There is introduction for your, uh, you know, when you're talking to a patient or when you're talking to a relative or a nurse colleague, please fix your introductions, okay? And practice them separately. Now the introductions on the phone consultations are a bit different. Please practice them as well. Now the other parts of the consultation that I was saying that fix them, examination, verbalizing the examination, verbalizing initial investigations, how do you verbalize those? Okay. How do you start your provisional diagnosis and how do you end it? How do you connect your data gathering with your management? That is also a skill. So please, these things are something before you start by hearting or memorizing differentials or any other things in PLAB2 preparation, please fix these things. Why I talked about the uh, introduction? Because we are starting the station. Obviously, we will start the station like this. Hello, Amasya, one of the doctors working in the GP clinic today. How can I help you? Well, Maria is in front of me. Now, Maria is going to say to me, doctor, actually, she wouldn't say that, doctor, I have this urea. She would say, doctor, actually, I have been having this burning and pain while passing urine. Well, Maria, I'm so sorry to hear that. And then... I will ask my golden question. Can you please tell me more about it? Okay. So open question. I call two questions as golden questions in your whole consultation. What are those two golden questions? The open question at the beginning and your beginning of your data gathering and Anything else question at the end of your data gathering? Okay. So open question at the beginning is, can you please tell, patient tells you their main complaint, doctor, I have this. Well, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Um, or you can say, must have been 
very difficult for you to manage. But can you please tell me more about it? Now, this more about it, why do I call it golden question? Now, in the exam scenario, even in the real life, I have noticed that patient will tell you, will make your job much more easier. You probably don't even have to do whole soccer eight or whole OD para at all. Because they will tell you so many things. For example, she might say, doctor, it started two, two days ago. It started all of a sudden. Now she has told you the onset, what kind of onset it was. Doctor, it is in my lower tummy. She has told you sight as well. Okay, so I hope you guys understand that open question gives you lots of information. Now, some of us, I have been watching it like, you know, since last couple of months since I started running this course, I have been noticing that doctors forget the information told by the patient in open question. Now, how do I, what is the trick? How do I not forget this information? Recap it. Quickly recap it. Well, Maria, so far you have told me that you've been having this pain since last two weeks. It is kind of a dull pain in your low, lower tummy, as well as you feel like a burning sensation in your vagina while, while you're passing urine. You also told me you've been feeling a bit sick as well. Is that correct? So see how I have summarized quickly, right? Now, after the open question, doctors, after I have asked about the open question, now the next thing I would do, I would apply Socrates, okay, to the main complaint, or I would apply OD para, okay? OD para. I'm sure most of you know already OD para and Socrates, okay? If any one of you in the course during first day would discuss all these things like very much in detail, um, I might not have as much time in this session, but at the end of the session, if anyone of you wants me to tell you what OD para Socrates is, I will do, okay? I will tell you because our main complaint here is dull pain and burning. I will tell you, we are going to explore it in terms of Socrates, okay? Now, what is Socrates? S is for sight, O is for onset, C is for character, R for ra radiation, A for aggravating and relieving factors, okay? Now doctors, all these questions, Socrates, if I want to like quickly ask these questions, doctors, can I please request you? Doctors just read these questions once and again, overestimating the abilities and they think, Oh, well, Socrates and Odipara, I know this from medical school. And when they go in the exam, they don't know how to ask this question in English. Now, instead of remembering the mnemonic, Odipara and Socrates, please remember their questions. Write down the questions in front of them. I'm telling you, you always overestimate your abilities. And you don't want to fail these, this station by overestimating your abilities. So write the questions. When did it start? How did it start? What kind of a pain it is? Where exactly is the pain? Does anything makes it worse? Does anything makes it better? Now, anything makes it better. That I have been noticing in lots of mocks. That when I say, yes, doctor, actually paracetamol tablet makes it better. Most of you do not follow your patient. Another trick passing clap to exam, follow your patient, follow your patient. And if you are a doctor who would follow their patients, you will never fail in this exam. Now, when I said paracetamol, you should explore that follow your these two things can you please remember these two things for your exam follow your patient and explore what he says okay so the patient said i took paracetamol now you should ask did it make it better yes doctor how many paracetamol tablets did you take 
how often did you take and when was the last dose now two reasons why you ask these questions doctors you ask these questions from the patient because two things very common in the uk overdosing patients self treat themselves for most of the things you don't want to overdose your patient what if they just took two or three tablets of paracetamol just at home and you offered them another one in the hospital no another thing you want to know that what is actually helping my patient or what is not helping if for example paracetamol and ibuprofen is not helping my patient i will move up the pain ladder okay so did you see how important it is to ask about the painkillers okay which painkiller did you take when you asked anything makes it better yes doctor paracetamol makes it better okay all right doctor i hope you all know that um, also severity when you're asking about the severity of the pain always ask the patient to score the pain okay on a scale of 1 to 10 one being the least severe 10 being the most severe so we are done with the main complaint okay we are done with exploring the main complaint now what is the next step the next step would be any associated symptoms now most of the times these associated symptoms have already been told by the patient in this question for example i told you that you know patient will make your job easier they will tell you so many answers already that you don't have to ask separate questions again for example patient could have told you already doctor i also feel sick along with pain and burning while passing urine i also have some discomfort in my lower tummy okay so patient has told you some associated symptoms as well patient could have told you that they have been feeling tired or they have been feeling lethargic or feverish as well okay now the next step after exploring the main complaint now you would explore the associated symptoms now i wouldn't say that explore those symptoms like in huge way apply whole odi para whole socrates to that no just few quick questions regarding that okay all right doctors now the next step after that now by the way the main complaint main complaint is called p1 usually okay now you don't have to remember in the exam what is p1 what is p2 what is p3 this is for you to make it make it easier for you to have a structure okay in my data gathering what do i have first i have p1 what is that what is p1 p1 is my main complaint okay after the p1 i ask the associated symptoms then i explore them okay how do i explore them if it is pain i apply socrates again to the any symptoms if it is any other symptom i apply odi para to it okay when did it start how did it start and all of that okay all right doctor now comes in this station what are the possible associated symptoms that patient might have okay now one associated symptoms when the patient said that i have pain and burning while passing urine urine so i told you follow one thing follow your patient and explore what he says so maria said urine explore the urine before doctors you will be lost if you try to remember the scripts you will be lost well what was what was i supposed to ask what was i supposed to ask just follow what comes out of patient's mouth and explore that okay urine now urine you would explore that can you please tell me what is the color of the urine okay what is the color of the urine have you have you noticed that it smells different okay or have you noticed any weird smell or any odd smell in your urine okay or does it smell particularly different maria okay now the next question is it cloudy at all 
is there any blood at all is there any mucus at all okay also some more questions regarding the urine you can ask that are you going more often for the urine okay for passing urine are you going more often are you waking up at night to pass the urine what are you doctors you know what we all know what is nocturia we know what is frequency are you going to ask the patient in plaf to exam what matters is that how you ask the question trust me if you ask the patient do you have nocturia oh well well i have had legends in mocks some legends say do you have nocturnal proxismal dyspnea as well <laughs> and i'm like oh yeah patient's going to know what is nocturnal proxismal <laughs> everything right so please don't ask medical jargons is something that if you do not avoid it you will be punished big time you will be surprised oh well i did everything i've gone through oh i get messages from doctors so many times saying that doctor i gave my 200% i don't know why did i fail i learned the scripts every single bit of it i don't know why did i fail the exam so there are there can be multiple reasons one of the reasons you used medical jargons okay so please avoid medical jargons how you ask the question will matter rather than whether or not you know what the question is you how you ask the question is matter is a matter right so instead of asking nocturia you ask the patient do you have to wake up at night to go to the loo instead of asking frequency you should ask that are you going to the loo more often okay instead of asking the patient that are you do you have any dribbling you ask the patient do you tend to wet yourself once you are done okay all right doctors now you have explored the urine next possible symptoms could be nausea and vomiting okay patient sometimes uh, in plap to exam or here in the uk the common symptom of nausea patient does not know very well like they know the word nausea but most more often they they are um, you know more used to or familiar with the word sick doctor i have been sick as well so sick back home i know we call somebody sick who has fever as well or they've been ill by any other um, you know disease but here being sick means nauseated okay so if the patient you can ask the patient have you been sick at all yes doctor or no doctor okay have you vomited at all have you brought up anything or have you thrown up at all as i said please notice what matters is that how you ask the question have you been sick at all yes doctor have you thrown up at all yes doctor now you start if the answer is in yes you start exploring the vomitus don't tell the the patient don't ask the patient that how your vomitus is instead you should ask what are the contents like what is the color like is there any mucus is there any blood is there any greenish fluid in the vomiting okay all right doctor now the all right next thing doctor next possible symptom could be fever okay now when there are uti symptoms you should try and explore associated symptoms with the fever now fever how do you explore if the patient said doctor i have been feeling feverish as well okay did you measure your temperature the answer can be in yes or no if the answer is in yes ask the patient what was the reading like if you have measured and did you do anything to help with your fever if they have taken any medication okay all right doctor so then uh now i was saying associated symptoms with the fever can be 
rigors and chills. Now, rigors and chills, we all know, happen when the infection has gone up into the kidneys. Pyelonephritis. Okay, so if the patient says, yes, I have had fever, please don't forget to ask any chills or rigors. Okay, or have you been ha feeling chills, chilly, or have you been having shakes, shakings, or shaking, shakes with your fever? Okay, all right, doctor, you have explored associated symptoms as well. Now, what is the next step? We are going step by step, okay? We have explored the main symptom. We are exploring the associated symptoms now. Now, after you have explored those things, doctors, now this part that I'm going to talk about, you can do it at the end of your data gathering as well. It's not a problem. It's totally, it will not make any difference if you decide to do this part early on or if you do it later on at the end of your data gathering. But it is important. It is an integral part of consultation here in the UK. Most, most, in most of our countries, we do not care about how the patient is feeling psychosocially. Why? Because the family systems are such, and um, we all are very much well supported by our families. But here, that support comes a lot of the times from social services, from NHS, because everybody lives alone, okay? And um, sometimes some people do not have a lot of support from the family. So if they have any disease, any problem occurring, um, it can impact on their life adversely. So it's very important that the patient um, their psychosocial history is asked, okay? So what is psychosocial history? Uh, so impact of the symptom or the problem on their daily life, on their overall life, okay? So how would you ask this? You will say, well, Sarah, I understand that you've been having this problem since last two weeks. Has it affected your life in any way? Yes, doctor, no doctor. If the answer comes in yes, explore it further. Ask the patient, can you please tell me more about it? How has it affected your life? Okay. And if she's not telling you that, then you can ask that, has it affected your daily activities at all? I know sometimes this problem, because it is related to your your private parts? Has it affected your sexual relationships at all? Well, if you have not taken sexual history as yet, I wouldn't advise you to ask this question as yet. Okay, because do you know as yet if she is sexually active? You don't know yet, right? So probably this question, not as yet, but just ask generally, has it affected your life? Or, has this symptom affected your life in any way? Okay, then ask work. Has it affected any effect on your work? Have you been able to go to work after this? Are you managing to, good get, uh, to get good sleep? Okay, I'm repeating this part again, doctors. Impact of the symptom on patient's life. So you would ask, well, Sarah, I do understand you've been having this problem since last two weeks. Has it affected your life in any way? What about your daily activities? Are you able to carry on your daily activities? Now, it also gives you an idea, doctors. If the patient's daily activities are affected, that means they, it is not, if, it is, if the daily activities are affected, what will you think? The severity is quite bad, right? Right? And if the patient is not able to have a good sleep or if they are not able to manage their work or if it is having an effect on their sexual relationship, isn't it something that can affect their psychological health? It can, isn't it? So that's why we call it psychosocial. 
all right and it is given i'm telling you doctors this is an integral part of consultations here in the uk so in order to pass your plap exam you need to work the, on this okay more often it is like a, whether it is an acute problem or a chronic problem you should ask but in acute problems and chronic problems what will be the difference the only difference will be the way you ask will be different okay all right doctors let's go to our next step so so far what we have covered exploring the main symptoms exploring the associated symptoms and taking psychosocial history effect or impact of the symptom on patient's life all right doctor i have just asked doctor in acute conditions if the if something that has been there for two weeks or a couple of years or months you can say that you know i i do reckon it has been quite long that you've been having this problem how is it affecting your life okay now if it is an acute problem okay uh, something that you know a woman came and she has severe lower tummy pain well sara i do understand that this is quite a severe pain that you are having okay i'll give you a scenario where i came across a patient sara was working in the ward she's a healthcare assistant and she was having a severe pain in her tummy now let's see how i asked sara well sara i do understand that you are having you are in quite severe pain right now and as i can see and how how is it affecting your life were you able to carry on with your work today how are you managing your family and your do you have any kids to look after at home sara or do you have any family responsibilities that you have to carry on with today sara okay so sara did you carry on working in the ward or were you able to carry on your daily activities after this pain started sara so doctor i hope it has been clear how would i ask if it is an acute problem all right my lovely doctors let's go ahead okay now the next step after the psychosocial history would be ruling out differentials now as i gave you background initially what i told you doctors that it is very less likely after my patient's culture and sensitivity results have come back and they are negative i am pretty much thinking that this is not lower urinary tract infection it could be an infection of the upper urinary tract but it's not lower at all okay so what i should be doing now i should be trying to i should be thinking of other differentials now that means right so what i will do i will ask about okay doctors now when you have differentials in your mind a dysuria can someone of you uh, one of you can raise their hand and speak up if a woman woman middle age comes with dysuria what are you thinking what are the other causes of dysuria who can tell me anyone no one come on doctors i'm sure many of you are consultants back home okay yes dr maya please yes so apart from um, recurrent uti uh, where the patient is having some resistant infection we have to explore the sexual history of the patient lovely doctor okay so you are thinking of sti what else are you thinking Uh, it can be even uh, any local cause zab oh lovely doctor it could be something like psoriasis yes yeah. eczema what else uh it can be a part of atrophic vaginitis i mean uh, premenopausal lady oh lovely doctor lovely amazing or you when you said local problem you meant some an anatomical problem right some structure yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it can exactly. be exactly um, yeah you are thinking of stricture you are also thinking of any instrumentation isn't it yeah 
it can be okay. scarring it can be any procedure done before it can be any uh, local abrasions multiple Beautiful. reasons yeah local abrasion ab abrasion in this age of female and she also gives you history later on that doctor i just changed my sexual partner and i'm really in love with him immensely mm. deeply in love with him yeah what it is happening it can be the sexual toy it can be the sexual exactly toy. Yeah. sexual toy or even aggressive sex yeah for that cause yeah okay now what else are you thinking one more and then we are done obstruction do you agree uh, yeah it can be yes obstruction or any malignancy isn't it worst case scenario we should think of the worst case scenario as well isn't it lovely dr maya thank you so much dr maya for your participation now you, all of us you welcome doctor now all of us can pretty much do this i'm pretty much sure that you know you all very talented doctors and we can do this we all can do this we can think of the possible differentials but what we most of us have problem with that we have the differentials and the mistake that we make i know you all are so good i don't have to teach you dds for this no i don't have to do that you can read books at home what i'm here to teach you and tell you the doctors please for goodness sake don't remember differentials differentials should be at the back of your head what you should practice with are the questions because you have been asking questions to your patients in your country in your own local language and you will start fumbling as soon as you start you enter the cubicle already nerves are going crazy they are going through the ceiling and now what you will struggle with you will be fumbling all the time remembering the questions so please write your differentials in the brackets as i did whenever you are preparing a station think of the question okay think of the questions not the dds dds should be at the back of your head okay now what questions am i going to ask the patient if i asked about the fever earlier i would have asked about the shiver and chills that be excuse me that means upper urinary tract infection i am ruling out pyelonephritis when i asked about the urine if i asked about cloudy urine or any pus in the urine i have already ruled out pyelonephritis so chills and rigors shivers along with cloudy urine or pus in the urine rules out what rules out pyelonephritis okay next question i would ask regarding urine i'm going to ask blood is there any blood at all when i'm asking about blood if there's no blood that means stones are out of my way cancer is out of my way renal problems like pcod uh, sorry uh, polycystic kidney disease pckd is out of my way as well if the patient said there is no smell that means the full bacterial infections will usually have bad smelling urine okay so that is out of my way as well frequency and urgent urgency happens in case of bladder problems in case of uti as well okay uh, so i would ask the patient uh, in your urine you mentioned is there any blood at all is there any smell are you going to the loo more often which is frequency do you have to rush to the loo urgency do you have to rush to the loo now the next thing would be retention do you feel the need of going again once you have that's that's kind of incomplete i'm thing retention means the patient is not able to fully empty their bladder okay so that if the retention is there what am i ruling out i'm ruling out any blockage like cancer or stones okay so these questions after that i would ask about discharge is there any discharge at all if there is discharge there is a likelihood my patient ha is having sti now sti sexually transmitted infections also can cause the symptom of dysuria as dr maya has told us earlier okay 
itching. Is there any itching at all? Okay, now itching in case of eczema, in case of psoriasis, in case of thrush or candidiasis. Okay, so that can also present with dysuria. All right. Now, doctor, depending, I'm not teaching you a particular station. Okay. I am teaching you how to be a doctor in PLAB to exam or even to work in NHS. All right. Okay, doctors. So these is, this is how you would rule out your differentials. Now, depending upon what kind of a history she gives you, you will lead the station towards that direction, okay? If, for example, I'll come back to this slide again and I will tell you management of different kind of history if she gives you, okay? Now, the next point after differentials would be sexual history. Doctors, there are some parts in our history structure which do not have to be completed in all types of stations, for example, sexual history. You shouldn't be asking sexual history everywhere until or unless you think the symptoms can be associated with sexual history. For example, um, male patient with urinary symptoms or a patient with um, history of lumps and bumps throughout the body or patient with chronic diarrhea Okay, their sexual history is important. So what I mean to say is sexual history is not particularly important everywhere. You will decide that whether or not my patient's symptom is associated with sexual history or not. This is what I call focused history. Okay, for this station, sexual history is the center of your station. If you miss this, Trust me, you will not pass the station, okay? So in some stations, it is, as you can see, is the integral part, is the central part of the station. In some stations, it is not even needed. That is what I call focused history. That's what you need for your PLAP to exam. You will decide, you will have a structure in your mind at all times, but then you will filter what you need to ask and what you don't need to ask because you only have eight minutes in the end of the day. All right, doctors. Now, it is also a skill, taking a sexual history. Many of the doctors, they know the questions, they know they have to ask the sexual history, but trust me, they do it wrong. And then they, they think, well, you know what? My patient gave me weird expressions. My patient did not open up. My patient did not give me any sexual history. Your patient didn't do that because they are trained to do that. What they are trained for, if you embarrass them, if you do not ask questions appropriately, they will not open up with you. Okay, so you need to ask the questions appropriately. What do I mean by asking the questions appropriately? Now, sexual history is something you should be signposting before it. Drugs history is something, recreational drugs history is something you should be signposting before it. Okay. And your cancer history, family history of cancers is something you should be signposting before it. I teach everything in the course, by the way, but today I will teach you only how to signpost for sexual history because that is related to our station. Okay, how to signpost. Now doctors, many a times, they ask the patient, by any chance, are you pregnant? They start their sexual history like this. And then sometimes if they remember all of a sudden, they will ask, are you sexually active? Now, wrong way of asking question. It should be other way around, isn't it? It's the wrong way. What is the right way? The right way is first explore if the patient is sexually active or not. Okay, then only they'll be pregnant, right? 
how they can be pregnant if they are not even sexually active so that means you are offended your patient patient was not even sexually active this could be some you know that lady she doesn't like boys anyway and you asked her or doesn't like sex anyway and you asked her uh, could you be pregnant she will be like looking at your face what do you mean <laughs> okay so it's the important question first ask go in a sequence okay so you should follow always follow these this sequence this questions are part of your sexual history all the time however these two questions are related to your this station because they are risk factors they are risk factors for developing this kind of dysuria which is not showing any kind of infection in the culture okay so the general sexual history taking what questions it should include are you sexually active do you and if the answer is in yes okay doctors can you hear me can you all hear me because one of the doctor has said i can't hear anything i hope all of you can hear me okay that's great okay someone just send a message to the doctor that others can hear it could be problem on his side okay lovely okay doctors so the question number 1 are you sexually active answer is in yes the next question do you have a stable partner now many of the times scripted doctors they ask are you sexually active patient said no and they ask the next question do you have a stable partner hello he is not even sexually active how you are asking she is not even sexually active how you are asking do you have a stable partner only if the answer is in yes okay do you practice safe sex now if the patient is not sexually active please don't ask rest of the questions i hope i am making sense doctors okay so sexually active do you have a stable partner do you practice safe sex okay um now doctors none of you has asked me doctor you didn't tell us how to sign post for sexual history before you ask the questions before you start asking the questions you have to sign post now how do we sign post for sexual history there are a couple of ways please don't copy paste dr asia have your own way of saying it okay so you can say it in different ways what i'm telling i'm going to tell you at least two to three ways okay well sara the questions that i'm going to ask they might sound a bit personal but these questions are usually asked as part of consultation okay and we ask it to most of the time to our patients okay now the second way of ask sign posting for sexual history sara the questions that i'm going to ask might be a bit offending okay or might be instead of offending say might be little intrusive okay or you can say might be little embarrassing but these questions are very important for us to ask because and we ask these questions usually as part of consultation okay or these questions are usually a part of our consultation okay you put it any way around all you are going to say that the questions you are going to ask might sound a bit uncomfortable might be a bit too intrusive might be a bit too personal use one of them might sound a bit uncomfortable you can choose not to answer if you are too uncomfortable at any point okay for example now you have sign posted for example this girl never heard of sexual toys and you are asking her do you use any sex toys now because you sign posted already she will not be offended at least because you already told her okay all right so after asking these three integral questions of the sexual history then you would ask any sex toys at all because again as dr maya told us as well that abrasions or local injury local irritants can also cause dysuria there can be a local cause right so lubricants or 
used during the sex or gels usually gels in the forms of spermicidal okay spermicidals can cause this kind of irritation as well all right so anything baths or soaks you can ask the patient okay about those things any gels spermicidal gels or lubricants you have used re recently all right now sexual history is over now after that what we should be asking is four p's now i would say make it part of your history four p's in all the women in your plapt exam okay who are of reproductive age between 25 to 50 at least okay you should ask these questions to all these women four p questions all right doctors uh so first p is period okay how do you ask period questions are your periods regular any heavy bleeding at all any spotting in between the periods okay are your periods regular okay when was your last menstrual period any spotting in between the periods any heavy bleeding or clots at all okay so period question is over next question is pregnancy could you be pregnant by any chance now this question you can ask here as well when the patient said no i don't practice safe sex if you say do you practice safe sex you mean to ask do you use condoms if the patient says yes don't ask them pregnancy question but if the patient said no i don't practice safe sex then you should ask could you be pregnant by any chance okay because dysuria can start in early pregnancy or late trimester of pregnancy as well okay without any reason all right so pills and uh, when you're asking uh, now third p is pills do you use any contraceptive pills at all okay do you use any contraceptive pills at all the next question diaphragm okay when you're asking about contraception at the same time ask the patient if you use any diaphragm for contraception now diaphragm is something that can actually irritate vagina as well okay and it can cause that's why i have written it risk factor for dysuria okay so ask the patient do you use any diaphragm at all pap smear now this question should be asked uh, to women in the uk uh, above 25 again reproductive age women okay when was your last pap smear done and what were the results like okay when was your last pap smear done and what were the results like okay now your next step after asking the sexual history and four p's would be flaws as dr maya has told us that there is a possibility that dysuria can be because of some cancer as well something more serious we should start from the least serious cause to the most serious cause we have to rule out everything so flaws is what flaws is your serious signs or red flags for cancers which will be part of your data gathering most of the time okay just to not miss anything too serious all right so f is for fever do you have any fever at all l is for lumps and bumps any lumps and bumps and anywhere in the body or any abnormal swellings anywhere in the body a is for appetite how's your appetite these days any weight changes at all w is for weight any weight changes at all s is for any night sweats all right so fever lumps and bumps appetite weight loss and sweating okay fever if you've asked already don't ask here okay lumps and bumps any abnormal swellings or any lumps and bumps anywhere in your body how's your appetite these days any weight changes at all and s is for night sweats any night sweats at all next stage next 
slides, doctors. Now, after that, now P1 is over. Okay, so far, what we have done, we have asked P1, which was our main complaint, which was dysuria. We have explored dysuria because dysuria is a pain. So we explored it with Socrate instead of Odipara. Okay, we explored the associated symptoms. Then we have taken the psychosocial history of the patient. Then we have ruled out the differentials, including the most serious stuff as well. Okay, while ruling out the differentials, we have also tried to take the sexual history of the patient. Why? Because the symptom is very much related to genitourinary tract. Okay, so sexual history is important. And we have added four Ps because as we promised, we will always include four Ps for all the women in reproductive age. Okay, and now we are doing P2. All right, P2. Now P2 is divided into two parts while you are data gathering. Now the first part is A, any similar symptoms in the past, okay? Any similar symptoms in the past. Now, this can sometimes give us a hint because when patient tells you that, you know, they had this symptom last time and you know, it happened to be a stone or it happened to be a urinary tract infection in the end. So it can give you a hint that, okay, what page my patient is prone to have, okay? That's why you ask this question. Any similar symptoms in the past at all? Then P2B is what? Any associated past. Sorry about that Y. Typo. There's a typo. Pasty. It's not pasty or pasty. It's past. Any past medical conditions at all. Now, when you ask about past medical conditions, many of the doctors always ask, do you have any past medical conditions or have you been diagnosed with any medical conditions at all? Doctors, that's just a general question, does not give you anything, does not offer you anything. Please, when you are trying to diagnose a condition, please ask the associated medical condition. What I mean to say by associated, here the problem is in the genitourinary tract. By the way, this is PCKD, not PCOD. Is polycystic kidney disease. Okay, so associated medical conditions. Have you ever had any medical conditions like urinary tract infections, any stones, any kidney problems in the past, any surgeries or procedures done on your front passage or your pelvic area, any history of any skin conditions like psoriasis or eczema? So you are asking associated conditions. Don't just say any past medical conditions at all. No, ask the associated system problems, okay? All right, doctors. Now we are done with our P2. You, I hope you have understood P2 has two parts. A, similar symptoms or this dysuria, is it the first time you have had it or have you ever had it in the past as well? P2B, past medical conditions, but please ask associated ones. All right, doctors. Now P3 is our lifestyle questions. You can say, you can quickly signpost it. You can say now a few questions about your lifestyle. Now, DESA is, Diet, D for diet, E for exercise, S for smoking, and A for alcohol. Now, doctors, if you have enough time, you can ask all of this. But if you don't have enough time, please ask targeted questions or focused questions. Now, what are the focused lifestyle questions? Regarding the exercise, you can ask the patient. Have they been doing cycling or any horse riding recently? Again, any trauma to the vagina or the local pelvic area, okay? Have you been doing any aggressive exercise, any cycling or any horse riding at all, okay? Then you would ask about 
doctors when desa is associated with any station i would fully explore it i would explore patient's diet i know my patient's diet might not be associated with this symptom but if you have time you should ask how's your diet are you physically active okay are you physically active which is exercise question smoking do you smoke at all yes or no if the answer is in yes always explore please tell me more about it what are the important questions regarding smoking how much do you smoke since when are you smoking have you tried to quit have you ever tried to get quit alcohol similarly ask since when if the amount is too much when they want to show it anything problematic it will be grossly problematic in your plap to exam if it is associated with their symptom okay so it will be grossly problematic some doctors just get uh, you know uh, confused that oh my god how would i know that you know the patient is drinking more or patient's diet is bad trust me they will give you a gross bad history okay now in this station as i said if you don't have time you can skip on other questions you can just ask regarding the exercise also ask lifestyle questions like ask personal hygiene do you wash yourself after going to the loo or do you use toilet paper any soaps or perfumes any products that you have been using on your body recently any bath soaks any irritants basically we are trying to find any bath soaks recently okay this we have covered already spermicidal gels and diaphragm so lifestyle questions doctors because they are associated now why do you what do you call a patient centered approach so your management usually has two parts it has symptomatic treatment specific treatment as well as some lifestyle changes um usually patient centered approach is something where you counsel the patient on their lifestyle according to what they have told you okay so you don't just generally give them a long list if you want to give them a long list just give them a leaflet okay but if you want to explain to them something quickly you should do it targeted patient centered whatever is wrong with them give them advice according to that okay all right doctors are we are pretty much at the end of our data gathering okay all right doctors so p4 is your maftosa is just a uh, general history for patients m is for um medications okay are you on any medications at all any prescribed or over the counter medications any allergies at all any family history of any kidney problems again family history of associated conditions okay uh traveling t is for traveling traveling here is not very significant okay uh o is for occupation what do you do for living okay is everything okay at work usually you can skip this question as well here because you have asked regarding the work you have asked her already um it doesn't make sense um occupation is not something that is associated with dysuria okay um somehow it can be associated because aniline dye uh cancer bladder cancers they the risk factor can come from the occupation for example if they have been um uh, you know um in the in a uh, in an industrial industrial area where they have been exposed to aniline dyes for a long period of time which is a risk factor for bladder cancer so maybe you should ask about occupation what do you do for living okay or if the patient um then social history is s is for social history who do you live with and how are things at home okay this is your another golden question uh, anything else uh, have i missed anything at all that you would like to add okay so that's your maftosa all right doctors <clears throat> 
Now the next step would be verbalizing the examination. Okay, doctors, uh, when it is not a combined station or it is not an examination station, you should just only verbalize the examination. Now examination is a part again, just like your introduction. As I always say, some parts are just fixed. So you should practice them first. You should try to get fluent or flawless with them first. Examination, verbalizing the examination is something like that. Okay, and now try and save your time. Try to say it as quickly and efficiently, clearly as possible. Okay, so here you go, hear me and follow it, please. Examination usually has three parts, verbalization of the examination. First part is the vitals, okay, vitals which you don't say to the patient that now I'm going to check your vitals. You say, now I will check your observations. The second part of verbalization of examination should be the system that is involved. In this case, it's the pelvic area, isn't it? Lower abdomen and pelvic area that is usually involved in dysuria, okay? And the third part of your examination is general physical examination general physical examination gpe well i'll tell you something funny one of the doctors uh, in mock one day they said to me well now i will take your vitals i will do your uh, tummy examination and I, at the end i will also do your gpe i was like gpe <laughs> so if you tell if you tell the patient in the exam I will do your GPE, be ready to fail, that station at least, okay? General physical examination. General physical examination, you will uh, say head to toe exam. Head to toe exam, because we want to avoid medical jargons as much as possible. All right, doctors, so how do you verbalize? Now hear me saying, the whole examination. I am talking to Maria coming with dysuria. I have taken the history from Maria. Now I'm going to verbalize the examination. Well, Maria, if it is okay, I would like to examine you. Yes, doctor, that's fine. Well, I will start by checking your observations, which is your blood pressure, your temperature, and your heart rate. Respiratory rate, you usually say when it is a lung condition. Okay, so I've done this. So Maria, if it is okay with you, I will like to examine you now. I will start by checking your observations, which is your blood pressure, your temperature and your heart rate, as well as I would like to examine your lower tummy. Okay, but if the patient gave you the history of discharge per vagina, what would you like to do? speculum examination but you're gonna say dr rasia am i going to say to the patient that i'm going to examine your vagina with a speculum no that's totally medical jargons medical jargons which are contraindicated for your plastic exam so how do you say it you say i would also like to examine your private parts with the help of an instrument we call it a speculum it will, it will help me visualize any discharge or any abnormality in your vagina. Uh, also, I'll be able to take some sample of the discharge at the same time. Don't worry, I know this sounds like an uncomfortable examination. So I'll have, I'll ensure your privacy and have a chaperone with me. Okay, so this is when a private part is involved. I will also say privacy and chaperone. But privacy and chaperone is always said when it is an examination station. Don't waste your time on privacy and chaperone if it is just verbalizing the examination. But if private area is involved, even you are just verbalizing, say privacy and chaperone. I hope I've made my point clear. So I am going to think that she did not have discharge so i'm just going to say this now in one go well maria if it is okay with you now i will start i will i would like to examine you yes doctor go ahead 
Okay, thank you, Maria. I will start by checking your observations, which will include your blood pressure, your temperature, and your heart rate. I would also be examining your lower tummy and your pelvic area, as well as at the end, I will finish my examination by doing a head to toe exam, general physical examination. Now, the next step, doctors, is your provisional diagnosis. Now, doctors, I don't want you to be the station doctors or scripted doctors. I want you to be thinking like a doctor, okay? So we, if the patient gave me history of vaginal discharge, my provisional diagnosis will be different. If the patient gave me history of something leading towards stones or something towards cancer, my provisional diagnosis will be different. If none of that is there, if I was not able to make up anything, patient does not have any symptoms or signs of upper uh, uh, urinary tract infection, which is pyelonephritis, patient does not have any signs and symptoms of stone, patient does not have any signs and symptoms of discharge from vagina, which is less likely. She will lead you towards one thing at least. If I'm not able to do anything, I will say, well, Maria, so, so far, I'm not able to find a single cause, but we need to investigate further to find out what could have been the cause of your pain and burning while passing this urine. Okay, but if the patient gave me, for example, history of discharge along with dysuria, I'm going to say, well, Maria, it is less likely that, um, well, Maria, you're, um, do you know, I start my provisional diagnosis like this. Well, Maria, do you have any idea what could be going on? No, doctor, I have no idea. Well, Maria, from what you have told me and after uh, the examination or after my assessment, I've come to a conclusion that you could be having a sexually transmitted infection instead of a water infection. Do you know what a sexually transmitted infection is? No, doctor. Well, sexually transmitted infection is blah, blah, blah. Give her the definition of sexually transmitted infection. Okay. Now, your provisional diagnosis, you should connect it with your management. Now, the good news is that, uh, Maria, we have very good treatment options for sexually transmitted infections. So uh, I will be telling you all about it. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I am going to talk to my seniors. We will do some further tests and blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's go ahead and do the management. All right. So doctors, in your management uh, of normal diagnosis, history and diagnosis stations, usually it includes seven steps. Now, these seven steps, doctors get very confused. They say to me many a times, even the doctors in my course, when we are just you know, starting our classes, they say, Dr. Asya, what do you mean by seven steps of management? And do I have to follow them in a sequence? Can I do the further investigations first? And can I uh, refer the patient to the specialist later? Absolutely fine. These steps are written so that you tick box everything. They are not there that you just say, number one, number two, number two, number three, number four. No, they're not there. Your consultation should flow like a normal conversation. It should not flow, flow like you are giving like, you know, taglines, number one, number two, number three. No, it should flow like a conversation. So how would it flow? Number one is admit. Are you going to admit this patient? No. You, can you even admit a patient in GP clinic? No. Well, Sarah, your condition is very much treatable. So we will be giving you some medications and we'll be doing some further tests for you. <clears throat> so what I will do, Sarah, first of all, I'll discuss your condition with my senior. Will that be okay with you? Yes, doctor. We also need to do some further tests. First of all, I would like to do a pregnancy test. I would like to check your blood sugar levels. 
I would also like to do a vaginal swab from you, okay, if there is any discharge, okay. Uh, also, I would like to do some further tests. I will uh, refer you with the advice of my senior for some x-rays and ultrasound scan of your tummy. Okay, x-rays and ultrasound scans of your tummy. You are trying to find out any structural cause. So x-rays, for example, for, for stones or any structural abnormality, ultrasound for different things. Lower tummy pain can be associated with, with appendicitis, for example. Um, so you are trying to do, you're trying to rule out all of that, okay? What could be the cause of her dysuria, basically? Then, next thing. Well, Sarah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we can give you some um, for your... Now, the next step is symptomatically treating the patient. Doctors, let me tell you this, that what is... Doctors always ask me, Dr. Asya, if I'm, rest, I'm not able to finish the management and if I am, there are two things that I have to do quickly in my management. What should be my aim to do? I would say three things you should do. Symptomatically manage the patient, whatever symptoms he had, try to tackle them. Number two, safety netting. Number three, what is number three? Where, if at all, patient is needed to be referred anywhere, they want to know because many of many doctors used to come to the UK and they don't even know where to refer the patient. They don't even know the the the, the proper referral process or where should I be be referring this patient. That's why they need these boxes ticked. So. What is the most important thing in management? Symptomatic treatment as a junior doctor. You should know how to symptomatically treat the patient. Number two, safety netting. Number three, where to refer the patient, okay? But you should be doing everything, but I'm just telling you the most important thing which you must do in worst case scenario if you have less time. So this is the symptomatic treatment. You will offer your patient paracetamol and ibuprofen tablet for, for your pain and fever. Uh, Sarah will be able to give you some paracetamol tablets and some ibuprofen. Now, sometimes as uh, I have your, well, doctors, something I forgot in provisional diagnosis, when you have any blood test results, please discuss that with the patient. The Here in this uh, station, you if you have uh, culture and sensitivity coming back negative, if the uh, previous two urine dipstick tests have been negative. Discuss this with patient uh, and tell her that, uh, Sarah, we have your um, culture results back where we try to find out if there's any bug in your urine. And we also try to do a dipstick looking for any blood or any proteins, any sugars in your urine. And we have not been able to find anything so far which I understand that it is very less likely that you might have uh, infection in your lower urinary tract, but there are chances that you could have sometimes infection or inflammation in your upper urinary tract, okay? Or sometimes you can have, there can be other causes like stones or one or two, three things you can tell her. So we need to rule that out. Uh, we need to find out the definitive cause. So for that, we will do some further tests for you. Would you like to do what are, what are the further tests for you? Then you tell her the further tests, okay? And then you will tell her because you are having pain right now. So we'll give you some pain for your fever. We can give you some paracetamol tablets. Well, here are some lifestyle advice, Sarah, which are important to relieve your symptoms. Uh, please try to follow them. So first of all, after every sexual intercourse, please try and empty your bladder, okay? Try and go to the loo. Say after the, the sexual intimacy, please go to the loo, okay? And please try and avoid the sex until you feel better, okay? Sometimes because it can be because of injury to the local tissues and it can keep on getting worse if you carry on with the sexual activity. Uh, avoid some shower gels and soaks because sometimes they can work as an irritant of the local skin as well. So please try and avoid those. Um, showers are better. And if you try and use some mild 
soaps that would be better for you please make sure to drink plenty of fluids it will help relieve your symptoms uh, also uh, try to look after your personal hygiene um, try and wipe yourself from front to back instead of back to front try and use cotton underwears and use uh, your um, your sanitary pads if you are using them please change them more frequently as well as change your undergarments more frequently as well okay now the fifth step of your management is specific treatment okay so if at all the patient had symptoms of stone for example okay something like the patient had loin pain patient had um loin to groin pain as well as there was blood in the urine you would think of referring to urologist okay if your patient gave you such a history all right doctor but if the history was leading towards sexually transmitted infection where she had unprotected sex and she also has some um, sti or she has history of sti going on in the past then you would give her uh, antibiotics and you will for further treatment you will refer her to the gum clinic or sti clinic okay gum clinic is genito to uh, urinary medicine all right doctors now the next step is safety netting very 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 crucial for passing plab to exam the chances of passing your exam increase or decrease significantly depending upon whether or not you have done safety netting okay if you do it your chances increase if you don't do it your chances decrease i wish there was someone to tell me these things these focused things how easy it would have been to pass the exam less effort focused efforts and pass the the exam piece of cake all right doctors pyelonephritis so pyelonephritis safety netting so tell the patient two things in safety netting well sara if your symptoms get worse okay and in next 48 hours if they continue to get worse and if you notice that there is cloudiness in your urine or you notice any blood in your urine you have increasing temperature and you feel chills or shivers along with it please tell us as soon as possible okay don't tell the patient to ring 999 i hear doctors in um, you know doing um, mocks with me and when i'm conducting mocks they say to me everything they want to ring 999 it's like overusing the services 999 is for emergency this is something that she can call back the gp all right all right doctor so next thing follow up follow up will depend upon what kind of history has she given you if she has given you history of on the basis of um, signs and symptoms of cancer or signs and symptoms of uh, stone or uh, cystitis inflammation then you will tell her please follow up regularly follow up with your urologist or your specialist and if she has given you history of sti then you will tell her please regularly follow up with your gum clinic or sexual health clinic all right doctors here we are finished our station ultimately uh, okay i'm so sorry dr pia has just joined um and our station has been finished well doctors thank you so much for joining in for today's session happy new year and thank you so much for starting the year hearing my boring voice or irritating voice rather um and doctors little bit about um, my courses i have been conducting these courses since last 6 months very successfully we've had five live batches and we have had uh, some doctors taking recorded course as well so uh, course live course is starting from the 4th of january coming monday uh, 
So if any one of you would like to join for the course, uh, you are more than welcome to join. Please let me know. I'm leaving the link to my uh, groups as well as I'm leaving my number here in case any one of you would like to uh, contact me regarding the course. So live courses starting from the 4th of January. All right, if you're interested. All right, you're welcome doctors. You're very welcome. Happy New Year, Dr. Yes, doctor, there can be 100 different things that uh, doctor is asking that how much is your course? Uh, doctor, there are there is different price for the recorded course. Live course is 150 pound. And if you have group of three, uh, it will be 125 pounds. Okay, 125 for group of three. Um, now you will be part of my group where I always answer your queries. I answer your queries regarding new stations as well. Actually, this was one of the re requests of our one of our doctors that they wanted to know about this station. So I thought I'll just um, uh, guide everyone. Uh, so you will it will be a three week course when it's live courses happening four hour class every day, uh, 10 a.m. British Standard Time to 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., okay? Uh, if anybody is not able to join in in the live session on a particular day for some reason, I give them access to the recorded lecture, which they can uh, go through later on during the day, whenever they get um, you know, time from their work. All right, so I was just writing down my number. Let me do that. All right. Uh, doctor, five days a week. So it will be 15 days course. 